All right, well, hello there, everyone. Once again, this is Maskey Finance coming to you live from South Florida, and I got a nice guest on the other end of this with me. He's coming. Well, I'll let him tell you where he's coming from. But first of all, his name is Jordan. So, Jordan, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. All right, great. Thanks for being here. So if we want to start this off, just tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe tell where you came from. And we'll take sure, it sure. So I'm, I'm Jordan. I live in L.A. Um, I am from the U.K., so I grew up in, in London, pretty much central London. Um, I went to college there, studied economics. Uh, and then I started my job as a management consultant uh, for um, one of the big four financial services firms. Uh, I was in London for about two years, and then I had the opportunity to uh, to move to California, which is exactly what I did. So I would move to California in 2019. Uh, I was living in Orange County for a little bit, and then moved up to LA uh, a, a couple of years ago. Um, and around this time last, maybe a little bit later last year, I, that's when I first um, bought my first rental property so uh, i knew i wanted to invest in, in property for a while um fortunately i i was able to acquire the capital into the stock market to be able to um to to you know get you know get going on that and um that's where i'm at today uh, i've got two properties in, in gary indiana um, i'm looking to expand my portfolio um i've you know i've learned a lot along the way i'm still a newbie um i watch youtubers like yourself and, and millennial mike to to, to um it's also very helpful to have those youtubers specifically on gary and uh, so they get in you know get insights on gary which i have actually been to um and uh, that's where i'm at today and you know again a newbie uh, but i'm learning as much as i can as possible i love it it's it's uh so far it's been my two investments have been uh, you know pretty good and um yeah i'm looking to continue to expand and build all right that sounds good that's pretty cool then because you came from a different country you know, the UK, you lived in London, now you're in California, and you got interest in real estate, so now you have two rental properties. But let me ask you this, you're living in, what, Southern California, and Gary, Indiana is up north in the middle of the country. How did you come to find Gary, Indiana, and what got yeah. you started there? Yeah, good question. So, uh, uh, around this time last year, I said I want to, I want, I want to buy my first property. Um, and this was really before I knew deal analysis. So um, I just thought, okay, rental property income. I didn't really understand, okay, all the costs involved in, you know, learn the cap rates and cash on cash. I didn't really understand what the metrics were to understand what a good property is or a property that's going to give me income today rather than just buying property for the sake of buying property. So um, I initially started looking into California. I was actually under contract. And this is, I'm very happy I didn't go through with this. I was very under contract, very close to closing. Um, on a $1.1 million house in uh, in the Valley, which would not have cash flowed at all. Um, and at the last hour, I, I you know I learned about these spreadsheets and I, I I saw, okay, this is, you know, I'm gonna have to wait 15, 20 years until I potentially get a return on this. So it, it's, it's not a good investment. So I then started to look at different markets in the US uh, where I could buy uh, at a lower range. Um, and I landed on Tampa. I looked at a lot of data. I actually pulled, you can pull a lot of data from Zillow um, like actual hardcore data in Excel forms, the formats, I like Excel. So I pulled that and Excel looked like a, not Excel, Tampa looked like a good market. So uh, I looked at Tampa, I went on a contract three times in Tampa, I actually flew out both times uh, on the first two properties. Uh, big mistake, because it's expensive to fly out to Tampa, especially when you haven't done the inspections even yet. But I was so excited I got a property under contract. I flew out to Tampa, walked around with the inspector, Thought, okay, great. This is going to be um, it's going to be my first property. The inspection report comes back. It's going to cost thirty, forty thousand dollars to pick it up to to get it in rental condition. So the more I looked at Tampa, I then saw, okay, this isn't going to cash flow today. Um, so then, funny enough, I found about Gary Indiana on TikTok. Uh, so there's a a, a TikTok uh, channel. I believe it's called Invest with Ace, and it's he, he he's pretty successful, a very successful guy. And he's been buying and selling rentals in Gary. And for me, initially the concept of being able to buy a house for, you know, 40 or $50,000 uh, that generates, you know, $900,000 in rents was very exciting. So I then looked at the Gary market um, and I, I found an agent 
and I joined uh, these Facebook groups, Facebook real estate, um, not Facebook, uh, Gary, the Indiana real estate investors group, uh, Northwest Indiana in, uh, real estate investors group. And I started to look off market properties. Um, and I suppose I'm going into the next question, um, but this is how I've really been my first property in Gary. Um, I then found, uh, I was looking at Gary every day for, um, you know, months and months. And then I saw uh, a wholesaler post this property. It's a two bed, one bath, Lincoln Street and Gary. For uh, Initially, it was, he was asking $50,000. It had a rental in there, brick built, lovely condition. Anyway, cut a long story short, I got that under contract. Um, I This was a cash buy. Uh, so um, I had the inspection report. I ended up getting it agreed at $45,000. And I had my first rental in Gary. It was actually set, had a Section 8 tenant in. Um, quickly after that, I went back to uh, Section 8 and asked for a rent increase uh, to match the market rents. And um, I've now got my, that was my first property. And I've got the tenant paying eight fifty a month. I paid forty five for it. And um, houses in brilliant condition it was recently updated so that was my first property in gary and it's been it's been a successful one so that's how i landed in gary and and now that i've got a taste of it very quickly i then soon bought my second which i can talk about in a bit um but that's how i landed on gary okay that's pretty cool then and i know you've watched some of my videos and you've watched i think millennial mike and you've heard us talk about gary gary to us like you know i live right now i'm on the east coast i'm down in florida uh, Mike is on the West Coast up in the Seattle area. And the both of us have been to Gary. Gary has been known, you can you can Google it, the most miserable city it in the US. United States. Yeah. And when I was in Gary driving around, it's like, I understand why. From my perspective, it wasn't the worst because I've been in Baltimore City to the slums and it's like, Baltimore City looks like a war zone at times. St. Louis looks like a war zone. Go to Skid Row in LA. It looks pretty rough. But Gary, to me, is unique because it used to be big, like pushing 200,000 people. Mm. Now it's down to 70,000 or so people. But it's starting, it hit bottom and it's starting to rebound. No one knows how far it'll come back. But there's a lot of land there. There's a lot of space. There's some good stuff happening with Hard Rock Cafe and Amazon distribution coming in. And so anyway, I decided back in 2019, I guess it was, to start investing in Gary. Um, we have a mastermind group. We're all investing in the Northwest Indiana area. And it's a, to us and to me, it's a long play it's a long game in the short term gary could slip backwards and go downhill again you just don't know but i'm optimistic and i think in the long term it's going to get better but it's not a guarantee though and so to me it's a little bit riskier than say investing in tampa because tampa is a city of three million people um but and with that being said, Gary can be a challenge to find good tenants, but if you get a good property manager and you get the rents, rents are going up. Like you mentioned, I think $850 for your- That, uh, <laughs> that was for uh, this two bed, one bath, and the second property right. that is a three one. I'm hoping to get um, at least a thousand. Okay, well, good, good. because. Two, three years ago, a thousand dollar rent in Gary was unheard of. No rents were a thousand dollars. Now there are rents that are a thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred, twelve fifty, thirteen hundred. So Gary's just like the entire United States. Prices are going up and rents are going up. And from your first house talking about it without me seeing it, it sounds like you got a pretty good deal because forty-five thousand dollars, it's a two-one. Um, but the good deals are, are getting harder to find because those prices are starting to, to creep upwards. So anyway, but you now have your second rental. So tell us a little bit about the second one. Yeah, sure. And before I go into that, there's, I suppose there's a little bit more context to the story as to other than the fact that houses are cheap in Gary, why, why Gary, um, there's, there's a few markets where I found where 
you have both the appreciation play and the, the cash flow play, You're usually picking one or, one or the other, right? And even if that prices of the, even, even if the appreciation doesn't happen, which it has happened even in the space of me buying that first property, I've, looked, I've watched the value go increase. Um, for the deal to work, the cash flow in itself, as long as the rents don't drop drastically, the cash flow is still there. Um, so you're still getting that today, whereas in the market in Tampa, it's still rarely going to, it's hard, going to be hard to cash flow and you're banking on appreciation and then getting involved in this market where it's hard, it's, uh, the prices are so sky high, um, you might have to wait until the downturn, the next upturn until you actually get a return. So that's, um, you know, that, that's why Gary and also looked about the history with, you know, US Steel and the fact it's got the infrastructure for a big city, it's got the international airport. So that gave me hope. Um, the second property actually closed on uh maybe five weeks ago on the market it was on zillow um they were asking eighty five thousand dollars for a three bed one bath i it was on the market for maybe two hours um i put it off at seventy thousand dollars and it was accepted uh it's a brick built three bed one bath good condition following the inspection i got it to 65 so at the moment i'm in for 65 um, it's in a, 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 a sense of the western part of Gary. It's, it's, it's a nice part of Gary. It's, it's a quiet part of Gary. The houses, I looked at the comps nearby and the house next door sold for $130,000. A few doors down, $140,000. So it's in a, you know, a nicer neighborhood of Gary. Um, it's currently unoccupied. So I'm making some, I'm doing some renovations with my property manager. Um, and obviously before I actually closed on the deal, I, I had my property manager go through the property and give me an estimation of how much it's going to cost to get it in a rent ready condition. It was mainly cosmetic. Um, it's, you know, some finishing of the floors, paint, um, some touch ups, um, uh, some new cabinets, but nothing major. Um, and at, that, at this point of my, uh, you know, my rental career, I suppose, uh, I don't want to do anything too big. Um, I'm not I don't come from a you know a big construction background, so trying to manage a big construction out of state in a market like Gary is something that I was um, you know I'm not ready for yet. So I found the property, got it on the contract, um, uh, and closed closing the property, and now I'm doing the renovations, um, which I believe should cost me. I actually had some bids through today. It's going to cost me around six six to seven thousand dollars to do it up so i'll be in all in for you know 70 seventy one thousand dollars um and then i hope to uh uh get the renter in um the bank have actually appraised it for seventy nine thousand dollars during the appraisal i paid 65 so i suppose there's you know a nice little bit of equity there um and that's my plan for it uh once i once it's ready in, in rent ready condition i'll get a renter in there thousand dollars um and then uh i'll move on to the next all right, that sounds good. And what's I'm curious, and if you care to share, what's the first name of your property manager? Uh, so it's a property manager company called Vilgar, Vilgar Property Management, V I L G O R. Um, and they got around a thousand properties, uh, and they've been they've been pretty good, uh, a little bit slow to respond. But um, uh, I actually when I flew to Gary for my first property, an agent that I was originally speaking with, even though I ended up going wholesale. Um, introduced me to uh, Sarah. Her name's Sarah, and and her husband. And uh, I met them. They met me at my house, and and they've been pretty good so far. They're the ones who are going to be doing the work on this property, um, on actually getting it rent ready. Um, and so far, so good. Um, in terms of what what I do really like about them is one of the scary things about getting into the rental business was, and especially as I research, you know how important a property manager is is you can really if you don't pick up if you make a bad one on the expenses you know, you know they can you know you can, they can upcharge you you're not there to verify um so that was a um, a concern and in the six months of me owning um this property there's been a couple few small issues and all they've charged is labor all they've charged is materials no labor um so that's that's positive again very early days um but so far they've, they've been good Okay, very good, very good. All right, because I know, like Mike and myself, Millennial Mike, when we talk, we talk about Gary's a challenging market. It's a unique kind of risk to it, but it's a sort of risk that I accept <laughs> of whatever, I have 19 or 20 houses in that Gary area. 
And that's the bulk of my portfolio. So if that's all I said, then you could probably safely say, well, Maskey, if you have almost all of your rentals in Northwest Indiana, you must believe in that market. So my easy answer is yes, I do. Mm. But at the same time, I understand there is, there's always a risk, but I look at it this way. When I lived in Virginia, I lived in a little, they called it a city, but it's a little town of about 23,000 people. I bought my first rental house there. I bought my second rental house there. I bought my triplex in that area. And that area is very small, yet there are real estate investors who have been investing there for decades who had done quite well. Gary, if Gary ever returns to 200,000 people, we're going to be super happy we chose that market because prices will go up. But if Gary stays right where it is, right around 60, 70, 80,000 folks, maybe a business comes, a business goes. But as long as those rents, we, as long as we keep our houses in good shape where we can command the higher rents, we're going to be fine exactly. because it'll positive cash flow. So. Exactly. And that's, yeah, that's why, um, that's why I, I like this market because I didn't rely on appreciation for it to work. And especially when, um, as I said, the, you know, all of the US, the, the, the prices have gone sky high and you're not going to be cash flowing. Um, the cash, uh, the appreciation to me is a bonus. If it doesn't appreciate, um, then that's okay because we can just, you know, I'll, I, essentially I want to follow your footsteps. So you've got 20 properties. Um, I assume do, do all your properties cash flow. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. Every property I own cash flows. So, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. And then you've got, you know, a nice bit of passive income. Uh, I have a question. Are you in, in this market where, you know, even properties in Gary, as you said, you know, relative to what they were have gone, you know, a lot higher, even since I bought my first property last year, I've seen prices go higher. So are you able to still find these deals? Are you still buying in this market in, in Gary, um, adding to your portfolio? Um, because from what I found, if, if you're buying a 3-1, for it to work, you don't want to pay more than 100, even, even close to that, right? Um, but, you know, the nice 3-1s are, you know, going, you know, are at least it's listed for that. Um, so, yeah, that's my question. Right, right. I in the past couple of months, I've bought a total of three properties and I'm testing out one new market and two of the properties are in a different market. They're in the Chicago area. And then one property is in Gary. The one in Gary, I found it on the MLS. It was an asking price of $45,000. And when I saw it, I saw a picture, you know, when you go to the, the internet, you see a picture of the front of the house and the price. And I see the price, 45000 it, it has to need a lot of work. I click on it and start looking at pictures. And I was like, huh, this is a cute little house. It wasn't, it was a 3-1, maybe right around 950 to 1,000 square feet. It needed some work. Like the floors are hardwood floors and they're faded and scratched. The wiring, the electrical, it doesn't have GFCI outlets. So the, some of the, the electric work needed some upgrades. And some other stuff, a lot of it was cosmetic. The electrical stuff is not is above cosmetic, but I knew that going into it. And I was amazed that it was listed at that price. So when I put an offer on it, I put an escalation clause in my offer because I was like, if we get other offers, then I don't want to lose this. And I was told there was a total of eight offers to buy the house and all eight offers were from investors. And I was the only one to put an escalation clause in there saying I would go $500 higher than any other offer as long as it didn't exceed a certain point. And I got a phone call in one day saying, hey, we got an offer in and they showed me, they emailed it to me where I could see it. We got an offer in that's at your same, your high level, the high dollar level. Are you willing to go $500 above that? And I was like, yes, because <laughs> it wow. still is a great buy. Yeah. So, so right now it's still being rehabbed, but um, rehab is going to be. I bought it for. I think I bought it for forty. I won't say fifty thousand. I might have been forty. I think it was forty five thousand. I bought it for. They might have been asking forty actually, and I bought it for forty five. 
my rehab is going to cost me probably ten to twelve thousand dollars because electricians are expensive. Um, but it should rent nine hundred, a thousand, eleven hundred, somewhere in there. And if it's fifty-five thousand all in, and it rents for nine hundred, nine fifty, a thousand. And will you, will, you go, will you go once you've done that those renovations? Will you go back to refinance and and, and get some of that that equity back? Or my plan is with all three of my houses um, that I just bought, two in Chicago, one in Indiana. I am planning to refinance all three of them because two out of the three I pay cash for. The one in Gary and the one one in Chicago I pay cash for, and the other one I'm using. I, there's a um, Millennial Mike and myself did some inter, uh, talks about Kiave. Kiave is a non-QM lender. And Kiave has given me kind of like a hard money loan to rehab the third house. And they gave me a like a hard money loan to buy it and a hard money loan to rehab it. And once it's completed and they do an inspection and it passes the inspection, then I will uh, switch it over to a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. And... I won't really get much cash back on that one, but the two I paid with cash, whatever mortgage I get on it, all the cash will come back to me. Mm. So that'll be good. That's interesting. And how and how are the the East, the East Chicago properties? Are they are they are they have tenants in at the moment? Neither one has tenants because they're they both need to be rehabbed and okay. both are being rehabbed. But I'm gonna go with Section Eight tenants, and I have a contact there that's helping me out. Because Chicago is another area, any any market, as you know, you have to be careful. Because especially the bigger a city is, like Tampa, Chicago, LA, you have good neighborhoods, you have bad neighborhoods, and you have a lot of neighborhoods in the middle. And you just got to be careful to find that right neighborhood. Because if you're on the wrong street or the wrong block, it could be a mistake. So you just you got to do your, as they call it, you got to do your due diligence. Mm. On any market, even like Gary, you, you have to do your due diligence to know where you're buying at because Gary's small enough that this block, the 100 block might be shots fired, but the 300 block, two blocks away is nicely manicured, yeah. nice yards. So Yeah, I, I remember when I went there towards in the last year and it was, um, it, I expected it to be more rundown than what it was. You know, I'd seen that YouTube, most miserable city in the US, and I'd read the reading, and it, I think at one stage it was the murder capital of the US. Um, uh, and I expected to feel a little bit more unsafe than I did. I never felt unsafe once when I was there. Um, but it's crazy how, you know, one street is full of burnt down buildings, and the next street is. It could be in you know a street in LA with you know nice lawns, nice houses, brick built. Um, so yeah, I completely agree. Knowing you know it's really street by street, and that's why having you know boots on the ground or even my property. That's why I, I do value my property manager because I there's been properties where I've been like oh, this looks like a great property, and they visited the property, they'll check it out and say no, this is not a good area to buy it. Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree, and hopefully as Gary develops those you know the streets that aren't so good will improve and i've heard that's happening already i've heard you know when i speak to people that have been investing in gary for a while for example my property manager um they used to say pretty much all of gary was you know you don't want to touch it and now um you know and now I've, i'm hearing just the downtown area is, is in even parts of downtown is improving um but other than that um a lot of areas is investable um east of broadway that used to be somewhere where it's it's a no go, um, and it still is somewhere. It's you know it, it 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 has its bad parts, but there's becoming good parts of East of Broadway, and um, that's interesting to see. And obviously, the hope that we're hoping is that just as more investors pile in, as more in, you know properties pay their property taxes, and the government has more money, as you know the Hard Rock Casino and other companies move in. Um, more money flows into the area, and as Chicago gets more, more, more and more expensive, people are going to start to move out. Um, so the hope is, you know, if it does, as you said, if it gets to that two hundred thousand, you know, these fifty, sixty thousand dollar houses will be, you know, one fifty, one eighty, and you know, we'll be very happy. <laughs> That's very true. And something like 
I've told other people about the investing Gary, like, you know, you know, millennial Mike, I think you're, you've interviewed on his channel, but I don't think the video has been posted yet, but it will yeah. be. But then, you know, I'm part of a mastermind group and most of us have properties in that Northwest Indiana area. And I know I've told others in the group, it's like, what would be really cool to me one day is like right now we're all buying properties spread out throughout around the city. But if we could go in one day and find a block, block. I've seen you talk about this. Yeah. yeah and all of us, each one of us buys a, one house and we get 20 houses on a block and we all flip them, not flipped them to sell, but we flipped them to rent. And we take it from being a rundown block to just being a nice three ones, two ones, renovated houses. Yeah, so I mean, that would be cool. cool. If we can rename the block as well, that'd be even cooler. <laughs> uh, I do know there's, a, I think um, Millennial Mike introduced me to a company that essentially sells turnkey properties. Now the prices term, it, it wasn't for me, but from, from what I heard and from what I've seen from them, that small area, Etna, they're pretty much, they, that's what they've done there. They, they've been buying and rehabbing um, you know, street after street in Etna, uh, which is just behind Miller Beach. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and that's, they, that's what they're doing there, buying entire streets and doing it up. So I completely agree to be able to, to, to buy a block and, and you know, if you've, as we've seen it street by street in Gary. So as long as that block's nice and it's not surrounded by you know complete chaos, then you know you can demand the higher rents and then we'll buy the next block. All right. All right. Yep, that's true. And Gary, Gary is unique though. Like it'll take some deep pockets to really turn the city around because there are, as you know, there are entire blocks where literally you need to tear down the entire block and just build fresh. And I'm not at that level where I can buy a block, tear it down, and rebuild the entire thing. But some investors somewhere, as Gary continues to improve, right now it's still smaller investors that are investing in Gary. But as we continue, word's going to get out and some big names will come in. And you might see them buy up a block or two and just tear it down and build a new neighborhood or something. Yeah, so exactly, we, exactly. It will be beneficial to all of us then if that happens. Exactly. So other than, the, are you finding off-market properties as well right now? Uh, or is, are, you, are you mainly looking at the MLS? Um, the three I've gotten this year have all been on the MLS. In the past, I've gotten off-market properties in different markets. I've gotten an off-market in Gary, off-market in Virginia, and off-market in Alabama. I, I did buy a couple properties in Alabama also. Mm -hmm. um, so, but primarily now, if I have a lot of contacts, so maybe somebody's going to tell me about off-market properties. But for the most part, I'm just checking out, you know, the internet, the MLS, and buying off the MLS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and that's what I've been doing lately. Um, recently, I haven't found anything um, that works saying that the property on uh the, the three one that i'm you know i closed on five weeks ago i found that a few months ago so i suppose that does count um but i look every day you know i'm i, I want to expand i want to you know my target for this year was four houses um now if i don't meet that i shouldn't buy four houses for the sake of buying four houses right um if i need to if the deals need to make sense um but i'm looking every day to find more properties um and I've started to look at the surrounding cities, you know, the Hammonds. Um, but even there, uh, the, the, I feel like you would still struggle unless you get a nice duplex or triplex. Um, cash flowing, it's still going to be limited in, in, those mar in, in those markets because a you know, nice house is 160, 170, rents are 1400. So um, that's, that's also, whenever I look outside, I always end up coming back to Gary because the the numbers just aren't as, you know, aren't as attractive. Right, right. I agree. And I think what we're going to see over the next 12 to 18 months, 24 months, is like all around this country, the housing market has been crazy. But as interest rates go up, if a recession starts getting more looming like it's going to happen, I think we're going to see, I don't think we're going to see prices drop per se, but maybe if I put an offer on a house, there's not eight other offers trying to buy that same house. Mm. 
you know, it'll be and that get, it was just one offer. That's when we have a better shot at negotiating a better deal then. Yeah. You know, when there's 10 to 15 people trying to buy the same house, prices keep going up. Yeah, you know? I mean, even even yesterday, interest rates went up, right? So it's the cost of, of, of lending and, and just getting into the rental business is, is, is getting higher. Right. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, all right, cool. All right. Well, we should probably wrap this up. I do have uh, workers here at my house. I need to check okay. on them. So, but it's been, Jordan, it's been great talking to you. We'll stay in touch because now you know who I am. You know who Millennial Mike is and you're investing in the same market that we're investing in. So maybe one day we'll, we can all meet up in Gary, Indiana. Exactly. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. All right. Sounds good. And we can, you know, as your portfolio grows, maybe we can, uh, Join, we can meet together on this channel we'll, and you can share your story about how you went from two rentals to yeah. whatever you're at. I would love to do so. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. All right, Jordan. Well, thanks again for preparing my channel. So for Maskey Finance and for Jordan, we're signing out. So hopefully you enjoyed this interview. And as always, check out my playlist of interviews. You'll find a lot of great interviews just like this one. So everyone, you take care, stay safe and do start investing. Maskey is signing out.